guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. I'm in my kitchen and I thought I would bring you in here with me. I just got done baking two breads for the family for this week and I absolutely love Elizabeth Jane. Um, if you took my free bread baking course or you've been following me this year on Facebook Live and on YouTube, you've heard me mention Elizabeth Jane before. Elizabeth Jane is from the UK. Um, you may know her as Keto Jane. Uh, she has amazing recipes and cookbooks available. Um, you can find her by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Elizabeth Jane or on, uh, on her website also at ketojane.com. Uh, she does amazing ketogenic uh, recipes and cookbooks. And for me, uh, she has been my... Uh, angel in disguise. I for eating for me is is overrated. I am very limited on what I can eat, um, and I can't have any grains. I can't have any wheats or starches. So being able to dive into her recipe books and be able to use coconut flour and almond flour uh, has been a godsend for me. Um, I'm a starch girl, so having to give it up cold turkey was a little rough. And also, um, you get a lot of proteins through the coconut flour and almond flour. And I, I don't eat a lot, so what I, what I eat, I want to be nourishing. And I eat a lot of vegetables, uh, some fruits. And uh, to be able to uh, enjoy these delicious dishes makes life so much easier. This is her bread book. And I am going to make the cinnamon swirl bread that is on page 20. And I'm going to improvise a little bit with that. I am always uh, adding to my recipes. So I'm going to add some blueberries today. Let me just get that out of the way. I'm kind of limited on space here today. Um, I'm going to add some blueberries. And I wanted to mention this. Um, we have propane freezers. And um, one above my fridge, which is propane. And then my, my uh, chest freezer downstairs. And they're smaller in cubic feet. And... Um, we pretty much utilize those, that freezer space uh, for our meats. And I have been utilizing a lot of Thrive Life's, my lighting is always so bad here, natural lighting. Um, I've been utilizing Thrive Life's freeze dried foods. Um, they are fantastic. They are very tasty. We've tried a lot of different freeze-dried and dehydrated foods, and most of them are very flavorless. I like Thrive Life because it does have flavor, and what's nice with this is they don't take up a lot of space, and you've got a lot in a can because it is freeze-dried. So I like to utilize these um, in my baking and cooking and uh, different dishes. It's also great with us being um, the wilderness folks that we are and when we're getting out and packing, it makes it really nice to have really good wholesome food in our packs that don't weigh a lot. So I'm going to add some of these blueberries then to my dish um, and, and then to my uh, cinnamon swirl bread. So Elizabeth Jane, if you're watching, thank you because I would be lost without your recipes. I really enjoy her cookbooks. There are many and um, she's a wealth of information. She's got a neat story too, but really neat person as well. I've had the privilege to get to know her and really enjoy chatting with her. I thought I would share with you, I always tell you that I'm utilizing my traditional tools and I am, I am uh, getting my egg whites nice and foamy. And I am using a wonderful tool that was gifted to me. My mother-in-law gifted this to me. And it was from uh, one of her cousin's mothers. And it is a unique gift. It was um, in Aunt Lois's kitchen. And, and that means something to me. And it also means something that my mother-in-law thinks of me so often. She's such a sweet woman and I'm very blessed to have her in my life. Not everybody can say they have a wonderful mother-in-law, but I can. She's like a best friend. So I'm very fortunate. And this tool here is just, I love it. I love the uniqueness of it. You can't, I don't know if you can see the blades, but they're actually jagged. Are, are ribbed and um, just a unique piece and it works wonderful for my egg whites. I'm gonna just I'm gonna try to move this down here so you can see it. 
great for keeping your arms in shape as well. But being able to use the traditional tools, I just, I love that. I love, you know, being able to pull them out or off of my walls. I often have my antiques on my walls and, and utilize them very quickly by just dusting them off or washing them off and utilizing them. So they make great decorations, but they're still very useful. To be honest, guys, I haven't had an antique of mine break, and many of them are 50 plus years old, if not older, and uh, they're made well. Not like today's counterparts that you have to replace often because they're not made with good quality. And it's a shame, but it's the truth. my egg whites nice and fluffy little tip and this is um, something that uh, Elizabeth Jane shares in the beginning of her cookbook she shares with you tips on how to bake breads especially almond flour and coconut flour um, that they rise and get nice and puffy you know creating throwing eggs in a recipe is easy but um, when you actually um, work with your egg whites, get them nice and full and firm, and then uh, add them into your recipes, you have such a nicer bread produced. And um, for those of you that have not worked with coconut or almond flour, coconut especially, it's a very unique um, flour to work with. You don't need a lot. This recipe is going to call for a half a cup and it's going to make a full loaf pan. So it's um, un unbelievable um, how it works and how dense it is and how it absorbs uh, the liquids from your recipe. So I'm going to jump off here a second and grab some other ingredients. This was kind of a fly by the seat of my pants video. So let me just grab things and get them handy and um, we'll continue on. Okay, I got all my ingredients together. It doesn't actually call for a lot. I have six egg whites in the small measuring cup that you saw me blending. And I have the egg yolks and a stick of butter in here. You can never go light on the butter. Okay. And then I have my Himalayan sea salt, baking powder, cinnamon, coconut flour, some almond flour. The recipe calls for coconut flour, but I'm going to add just a touch of almond flour just because I like almond flour mixed in with mine. And I am going to use erythritol today. Um, it is a low glycemic, low, no sugar um, sweetener, which is important in my diet because I can't have sugar. I typically use stevia. Uh, and my own stevia, but I am out. So I am going to use that today. One of the tricks, see a lot of people just start diving into recipes and we forget about some of the ways, traditional ways people did things. They work with their egg whites and get them into stiff peaks to enable them to get more volume and, and a better quality bread or pastry or whatever it is they're making. They also used to blend their other ingredients uh, with the sugar, so their fats with the sugar. So I'm blending my egg yolks, my butter, and my erythritol together to get a good blend again, which is going to give my um, bread a more volume and and a better uh, final product. So these are things that you know were done in the past that are not always followed um, currently, and that's why I want to point it out because. Sometimes people, when they're making different things, they're disappointed with the, the way it turns out. And sometimes it's just because we're just so quick to throw things together. But this really doesn't take that much longer. And I love using my hand mixer. So if, I love being in my kitchen. It, there's a very big difference when you enjoy being in your kitchen and when you feel it is a chore. And I just love being in my kitchen. So it's, it's fun to me. And, and I enjoy making things for my family. I also have uh, vanilla, my homemade vanilla um, here that we will be using as well. I don't have it in front of me. I realized I didn't grab it. But um, we're going to mix all this together here. I'm going to blend the um, egg yolks and the butter and the sugar together, the erythritol, and uh, I'm going to jump back on. 
Okay. Here is my vanilla that I was referring to. Um, it's a newer batch, so it's not as dark right now. Uh, for the recipe, you can go on to treyerwilderness.com and um, search homemade vanilla recipe and you will find it. It's so nice to be able to make your own things, make your own seasoned salts and your taco seasonings and your salad dressings and your mayonnaise and your vanilla. So when I say that I need to stock up in the uh, in August for our winter, that's why, because I need to have all of my raw ingredients to be able to make all those things and be able to keep my family going without having to buy processed foods. I want to talk a little bit about the Thrive Life and why I'm utilizing that. Like I said, I don't have a lot of room in the freezer and I really don't enjoy eating things out of the can anymore. After my illness, so many things affect me and so many things are toxic in our food system and I like to dehydrate as much as I can and preserve as much as I can um, through both what we grow, what we forage, and then what I'm also um, purchasing um, from Washington. One of my dear friends lives in Washington near a bunch of organic farms. So I am able to have her pick things up for me or pick things for me and um, she brings them along down when they come to visit on their uh, little piece of land near us. So it works out really awesome and I can a lot of things, a lot of food and have my shelves very full going into winter. And to be able to have the Thrive Life on my shelf um, really uh, is a win-win for us because like I said, it's got really good flavor. The broccoli, all the vegetables taste so much better than the stuff you buy in the store that's frozen and you don't know how it's harvested, you don't know how it's grown, you don't know how much chemicals are on that frozen food as well as what's in the can. Where um, Thrive Life has a very strict um, policy uh, in regard to where they are getting their food from. So I'm very thankful for that and uh, just the flavor alone. Freeze-dried food has so much more flavor than dehydrated food and I really enjoy being able to pull it off my shelf and utilize it in recipes by itself. Um, I make and bake so many things and I just wanted to share that with you. It's a great way to um, build your food supply. Uh, the cans are sealed and will last a very long time. So they're a great way to uh, add to your cash if you're a prepper and if you live like we do and it's just, I mean, we could be considered preppers. It's just a level, it's just the way you look at it. We, we feel that we are living a lifestyle of preparedness. This is just not something that is a whim for us. It's a day-to-day -day level of preparedness for us. So, you know, you look at it this way that you're supplementing your grocery, some of your grocery money to be able to purchase some of the freeze-dried foods that you can also put up, but then also, um, use and, and utilize in your recipes. So there, they have meals that are made. I have not purchased the meals with our diet and our restrictions. I just feel it's safer to utilize the vegetables and fruits directly. And that has been a godsend. And I, like I said, I love being able to put them in my pack and just head out into the wild with them. This weekend, past weekend, we had gotten out and did some hammock camping and I had some apples and blueberries and strawberries along with me just to nibble on and the broccoli is just great to, to crunch and munch on. I, I, you know, I think we all like to be able to munch on something crispy, you know, like a potato chip or a pretzel or something like that and I'm very limited there so to be able to get uh, something crispy that's wholesome is really uh, a good thing for me and I can always season them if I want to. So lots of things you can do and just great and handy to have in the kitchen. It's also great to 
be able to make jar meals and pull them off in a pinch so that if you're a busy family and you are trying not to eat out and trying to eat more wholesome, you can, you know, take a Saturday morning and just throw some of the uh, vegetables in a jar and make a soup that you can easily dump out or, um, you know, into the pan and just make. It takes, you know, something between 10 and 15 minutes to make a meal when you do it that way. So I'll start sharing some of those ideas if you guys are interested. Um, but it's a great way to be able to have things on your shelf and to be able to be prepared but also eat healthy and that is as you know something very important for me I don't have I don't have a choice or I will be very sick if I'm um, putting the wrong things in my body so I'm gonna mix this up a little more um, and get everything together and uh, share some more of the process with you like I said bear with me this was like a, a impromptu video I wasn't really preparing for this but I thought I would share it with you so just bear with me here I'm jumping back on here. I thought I'd share something with you. Do you go to the thrift stores and find a lot of um, individual measuring cups and lonely measuring cups that don't have that aren't part of a set? Buy them. They're usually super cheap, and sometimes they'll even give them to you for free because they don't have anything with them. Um, but ten cents, twenty-five cents, they make great scoops. And this is a quarter cup, so I've got a measurement measuring tool in my coconut flour jar enabling me to scoop it out and actually know what I'm getting versus just a, a scoop which I do have a lot of little antique scoops which I love but it's also very handy when you can take a measurement um, and and have these in your jars ready to go so that you're not so that you're not struggling or, or having to dirty other things they're always in the jar so just a little tip for you makes it easy Notice I don't use a measuring spoon with my vanilla. Vanilla is one of those things I enjoy getting a little extra in my recipes. Okay, I have my salt. We're going to put a half a teaspoon of salt in the recipe. I put my coconut flour in, which called for a half a cup. And I'm just going to sprinkle some almond flour in there. about a little less than a third of a cup. I just like to combine the two. It gives it really good flavor. Here's another one that I don't measure. Although I need to get it out of the jar, it wasn't a flat. Level teaspoon or half a teaspoon it was a teaspoon and a half so it did call for a teaspoon but I always go excessive on that and I'm gonna put a teaspoon of baking powder in here and I do use the side of my jar and sometimes the lid there we go now it's all in there all I need to do now is just mix it together good and then I will fold in the egg whites. Oh, that cinnamon smells so amazing. I love cinnamon. Cinnamon is one of the things I have diffusing in my house all the time. Okay, now as I mentioned, the coconut flour really absorbs liquid, so it is really getting thick in my... In my mixing bowl so I'm going to start folding in and there's some liquid in the bottom so I'm going to fold that in first and get that mixing up and stiffen that up a little bit but by taking the extra time to stiffen the egg whites and to blend your fats and sugars together you will really get good results with the uh, bread and it's volume and I just made all those fresh jellies I have dandelion and lilac and spearmint and strawberry and it's a lot nicer to be able to put them on something than to eat them by the spoonful 
Oops, I just gave it away then. Spooning my jellies. <laughs> mixed up pretty good. Let me fold in the egg whites and I'll jump back on and show you it in the pan. Okay, so I've got everything mixed together. Now I am just going to add some of the blueberries in here. I love blueberries. Good antioxidants. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what they look like so you can see. Those are freeze dried and I'm just going to mix these in here and then we'll put it in the pan. Um, I do actually uh, sell Thrive Life also because with the volume that we purchase when we stock up it just made sense. So if you might be interested in, in ordering some of their products you can go to treyourwilderness.com slash shop thrive right now because I have got a open order going on right now because I'm going to be placing mine and if you're interested in getting recipes from me and um, information on the products and how I'm using them because I'm going to be sharing all kinds of recipes upcoming with utilizing them in my recipes and also doing some of those uh, jar dishes if you guys are interested in seeing that so you can join my newsletter by going to treyourwilderness.com slash thrive life I just basically share how I utilize the product and you know make it available to you when you have nice things that work in your kitchen that save you time that taste good and if you're looking for wholesome things it's really important to find those things and I've been sharing all my other resources with you so I kind of feel like I was not doing you a justice in sharing this too so I decided to start sharing um, this as an avenue for you also so I'm mixing this putting this in here now you can see this batter is a very soft batter it doesn't look like a bread batter um, but it will look really nice when it's finished baking. So I will get this in the oven and then show you what it looks like when it is finished. But I'm going to show you this quick um, in here. I can't give you a side by side, but I can at least tell you about it. When I don't take the time to stiffen the egg whites and blend the fats and the sugars together, my uh, pan is not near as full. It really does make a huge difference on uh, the appearance of the bread in the pan and it really makes a difference on how it bakes as well then. So you guys will see the difference then when I pull it out. And I could clean this off, but you know what? I'm going to enjoy that in just a second. So let me show you this here. Hopefully you can see that okay. There we go. So we added some blueberries and a little bit of almond flour to Elizabeth Jane's cinnamon swirl bread, which is in her keto uh, bread baker's cookbook. And like I said, I love her. She is just a doll. She's a really sweet person and her recipes were and her cookbooks were created in an effort to help herself and help others um, she struggles with diabetes so this is a great um, way to control diabetes but still also enjoy things when we are on specialty diets we don't have to be limited and we don't have to eat bland foods and that's what I'm here to share with you because I'm on this journey for my health reasons and if you're on that journey for health reasons also I'm gonna take you along because I don't want you feeling like you're missing out um, that was one of the biggest things I did with the mountain boy you know with his restrictions on wheat and dairy I didn't ever want him to feel like he was missing out so I did everything in my power to uh, be able to make recipes and foods that he always enjoyed previously um, just with a gluten-free and dairy-free uh, content. So 
Anyway, I will jump back on here after this bakes and share the end result with you guys. And I just sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon across the top. I do have a little bit of stevia. I may sprinkle that across the top just to give it a nice sweet twist on, um, when you bite into it. So I will share this then in a little bit. Stay tuned. Okay, guys. So our bread is done. And when you're making ketogenic breads... You definitely want to uh, work with your egg whites and cream your fats and your sugars together to get a really nice result. And again, Elizabeth Jane is my hero. Um, you can find her by going to tryerwilderness.com slash Elizabeth Jane, all one word. And check out her cookbooks. They're amazing. If you are on a paleo, a gluten-free, a low-sugar diet, She's the one you want to check out. She just does amazing stuff. And um, I'm going to spin this around quick and show you the results. If you could only smell my house between the blueberries and the cinnamon, it's just amazing. Okay, there you go. So you can see how nice that rose in the pan and just how nice that looks. Uh, like I said, I wish you could smell it and I wish you were here. I'd share a piece with you. So anyway I just thought I'd jump on here and share this with you um, I do a lot of baking and a lot of uh, specialty uh, foods for our diet so I'm going to continue to share all that with you so guys thanks so much for joining me have a good rest of your day and we'll see you on the next one God bless <music>